Hey guys, and welcome back to Building Habits. In case you're new here, this is a series where I introduce a set of rules you should try and follow in every game you play. The goal is to teach you strong fundamental principles that we will improve upon as we go. This series is my personal take on how to improve in chess, starting from 400 ELO all the way up to 2000 ELO and beyond. I'm gonna choose a series of rules that I have to follow what you might notice is that you will miss chances to play winning moves. That's okay. The goal here is to focus on the fundamentals and I'm trying to get you guys to build good habits and play high percentage moves that will help you increase your rating. Our shad eight. Now we're, now we're uh, getting higher rated than our opponents. Let's go E5. Knight f3, you guys know we're coming with knight c6. Okay, four knights, looks solid. If d4, you know, we're going to take everything on that square. Okay. Okay. Ooh, you guys know, knight there attacking the bishop, we always drop back. We take always towards the center. Always towards the center. Uh, we're looking to get castled. Ooh, well, especially after that move, we're definitely looking to get castled. A3, well, H6 is a natural move to follow. And continuing development. Nice little pin there. You guys uh, should know by now, when you pin a knight to a queen, especially, um, obviously when you pin a knight in general, it still applies, but especially when you pin a knight to a queen, you do not, you do not, want to take that knight. You always want to go back. King f1. Do you think this guy is just a big alpha? Going king g2? Or do you think he mouse slipped? I think he's an alpha. That's a very frightening move. King f1. All right. Let's uh, get the queen up. Then we will bring the rooks to the middle. Rooks to the middle. There we go. Okay, we're pretty much done development. Um, now it's time for some pawn moves. And actually, I don't have any to move. But even if I could move this one, I would choose this one because it is in the center. It is in the center. Takes. Let's take with the knight. We have a solid looking position. That's a capture. <laughs> so we're going to take it. Captures. Solid. He takes with the bishop. Attacking our rook. Attacking our rook. We have some decisions to make. Some decisions to make. I think it's not uh, not entirely obvious here. Generally speaking, I would say we're, we're not really playing the move f6 too much. So um, I'm going to move my rook. Move my rook out of the way. I don't think f6 and f3 are moves that we really want to get in the habit of playing. And I don't think that we those are moves that we have been playing so far. So I'm going to move the rook instead. Queen d6. My opponent says, show your skills and win. Winning on time is nothing. Wow. My opponent's really out here. Um, how can I feed here? How can I proceed here? I'd, I'd really like to play like knight d4, for example, right? Um, 
This bishop is like actually super annoying. Actually super annoying. Can't really go here. Maybe rook here to double the rooks because I don't have a place on d8. Yeah, show us your skills. Yeah. Okay, queen's being attacked. Super annoying, actually. Um, can't really go here. Here or here look like the reasonable squares. Let's go back to d7. Queen there. And I just can't get this. Uh... Yeah, let's double the rooks, which is why I did the rook e6. So we'll start with that. Um, but what I really want to do is play an AT4, and I just can't do it yet. Just can't do it. Very annoying. How can I get my pieces? Okay. Pawn push in the center. This might be what we need, boys. Why not A8 instead of C8? Because I moved the rook over, so I felt if I had to move it again, I wasn't going to go back where I started. Okay. It's going there, and I can't take it. Oof. The pawn push in the center trick didn't work. Did not work. D4 looks like a strong move. Um, maybe let's move my knight. Try to maybe bring my queen in the center or take here. I think I have a tough position. Like, I think I have a very good position, but I also think that it's kind of tough. Like, it's just not super easy to, to move, right? Because I want to do, I want to do this, but I'm just not able to move the pieces, basically. Queen's being attacked. Fantastic move as well. Gonna have to move my queen somewhere. Um, probably going to get uh, forked here. But unfortunately, let's go back to b7. I think that's the product of a tough position. Gotta move our rook. Let's go here. Let's go here. Oh, after d5, my opponent said zero skill, noob. Oh no, I'm getting uh, I'm getting blasted here. Let's take. I guess we can pre-move or recapture. I'm getting destroyed here. Well, at least I have a center pawn now. You know what I mean? Like, at least move pushing the center pawn is, is reasonable, right? Like. Finally, I have some moves. Honestly, maybe I like my position more than before. Okay, it takes. It's going to take back. Kind of have to. I have some, you know, pawn moves I can do, but oh. Knight takes d5. We're getting blasted here. Takes and bishop takes is coming up. So I pretty much have to stop knight f6. Uh, don't really have a good way to do that. Uh, there's a discovered attack coming, so probably going to move my queen to do so. It's a like queen here, but I mean, obviously, this is a dirty pawn to lose. Dirty pawn to lose. Just trying to make a move that guards my pawn as well. Okay, stack my rook. Let's choose some place in the middle of the board. Oh, he called me a noob again. I'm getting blasted by this guy, Dan. Bishop d7. Bishop d7. That's a serious move. That's a serious move. We're gonna have to move our queen, and if I go there, he's gonna he's gonna take. We're gonna have to uh, avoid it. You know, he's got some uh, serious plans for me. Okay, we're gonna have to take that. It's a trade, right? It's a trade. Let's get our king up in here. Let's get our king up in here. So maybe push our pawn. Central pawn. Oh, recapture. Go, go. At least I'll have a pass pawn at this point. That's a pass pawn, technically. Technically. Maybe a check. 
try to win some pawns here. King to the middle. That's that's what we're taught. That's what we're taught. Oh, my rook doesn't have anywhere to go. That pawn's protected. King to the middle. Pass pawn push. Let's get f4. Let's go back to the middle. I'm trying to push my pawn here, but I'm having a tough time. I have to sacrifice. Let's push our pawn. Oof. We're trying. We're fighting. We're giving away all our pieces for stalemate. But it's not good enough. Our shad eight took us down. Oh, he called me a noob again. Ouch. Well, I mean, we, we got clapped by, by our friend here. Show your skills and win. Winning on time is nothing. Zero skill, noob, noob, noob. Useless. Got destroyed. You don't have skill. Get roasted here, boys. All right, let's see the game here. 48 accuracy, not our finest performance. This was solid. I mean, knight g5 is uh, sort of questionable. King f1, I mean, uh, like I said, I thought that was, you know, an, an alpha move. I thought that was an alpha move. I do not think he messed up there. I do not think he messed up. King f1 is excellent. I trust him. I trust him. Okay, so position was looking solid. Yep. And here, you know, basically we just didn't have a lot to do. Seriously. Um, what I mentioned about bishops and keeping pins is look how much pressure we kept here. Or he kept here, rather. I wasn't able to move my knight. I'm not able to push my pawn. Like, I, I didn't really have things to do. And yeah, it, was, it was a tough position. It's a tough position. Missed win. E3. Damn. Missed a win here against Arshad 8. But uh, nothing I feel bad about. E3 is obviously not a move we're going to play. Okay. And... Would have to go d5, but this is a, a solid continuation. Bishop d7 is an inaccuracy, so please get those allegations out of here. It was actually a mistake. And unfortunately, we uh, <laughs> our rook is just trapped on h2. It's brutal. Yeah, not much we can do here. At Orbis, you know, my my guy Arshad, he uh he needed to think about his moves, you know. He needed to think about his moves. Now some people need to think about their moves, you know, the the exact same amount of time every time they move. I think he has a bright future ahead of him. We'll have to check back in with our friend Arshad soon. But for now, we continue with Arshad's younger brother, Akash. Let's see if uh, the whole family comes for me. That's a capture. Okay, well, let's get the knights out. Arshad and Akash, they're all coming for me, guys. This is this is tough. This is tough. Hmm. Queen to f3. Well, we're going to stick with the habits. Go bishop c5. e5. We can't go here, here, or here, or here. So we're going to have to go. X g8. Not a pretty move. h4. 
It's Arshad's younger brother Akash, who's now now trying to have his uh, his turn with me. Oh, Bishop G5. We're gonna have to take that free piece. Oh, well, I've only got one move. It's king there. Jeez, that is this checkmate? I, I'm only, I'm only gonna have one move here. How do I get how do I get out of this? Oh, I have to take it. Oh, oh, would you look at that? I have to I have to take it. I'm forced to. I have to. Yep, let's take that back. Oh, sure. Don't mind if I uh, take a free pawn and also fork you. N no problem. No problem. Oh, a free piece. Okay, we'll take a free piece. No, that's fine. That's fine. Bring the queen back. Bring the queen back, you know. Um, just make sure to follow those habits. Uh, bishop out. Okay, let's uh, make sure to get our pieces developed here. Yeah, a a Akash, uh, you can tell he's the younger brother, put it that way. He's got uh, some learning to do. There's a, there's a learning curve. Okay, let's uh, continue development. Okay, uh, let's get our king up. And remember, you know, rooks to the middle. And I'm going to hide my king because I don't want my king to be in the center of the action. Rook over as well. King back. Oh, a trade. Sure. I don't mind. We don't mind trades around here. Rooks to the middle. King to safety. Rook takes e7. An interesting guy. An interesting guy. Buddy of cash. Harry Potter. I mean, it. it happens, you know. That's why I'm here to remind you. That's why I'm here to remind you. We want to take this pawn, we can't quite do it. Let's bring the bishop back and maybe double the rooks on the open file. Doubling the rooks. Nice, uh, a nice simple plan. We've used it before. It's an effective way to trade pieces. Go for key eight. And yeah, we've used this before. Basically, uh, double the rooks, use them to support one another, bring it all the way down there, and uh, then you get uh, then you get a trade. Then you get a trade. Okay, let's go here. Back upon. Arshad8 is in chat. He says, are you the losers who've reported my profile account? Hello to Arshad8. We need justice for Arshad. Yes. Arshad, I was... Uh, is he saying what a uh, strong player I thought you were? Are you telling me that... That your account got banned? There's no way. Let's give a check. Literally no way that's real? Well, hang on, guys. In my profile, it literally it literally links my my you know DM him on Hamlet. It says right there. I'm just saying a dedicated Arshad could easily Google that and, and establish the stream. I'm just saying it's possible. Uh, he goes here. Let's let's give another check. You got messages from stupid viewers. Is that uh, is that the case?
Oh wait, we just want to go back to his. Let me go to his regular profile. It's a little. It's a little difficult. We give a check. Let's take check. It's a fake account. It was created today. Well, obviously Arshad is not going to be, let's say, watching the stream previously. Check. He was raging mad. He was raging mad. He found the stream. He tried to type, he realized he couldn't. So he made a Twitch account because Twitch said, sorry, you're not allowed to type in chat unless you, unless you sub. Makes sense to me. Makes sense to me. Our, our friend Arshad says, oh no, guys, his account's been closed. That's tragic. How? That was fast. No. No, really? I don't believe it. I don't believe it. How's that possible? Guys, you know what that means. You know what that means. We got to get our next game quick. Guys, we got to get the next game quick. E4. No, no. Arshad is coming. He's going to level up his account. He's going to get me again. Guys, quick. We got to get the next game. We got to get the rating up. Arshad is coming. Next game. Next game. Arshad 9 is coming for us. He's going to be coming back with a vengeance. And he's going to be climbing the, the rating ladder. He's going to be climbing the rating ladder. We got we to run away from that. If we don't get the rating up, it's going to be our fault. It's going to be our fault. Yep, let's get castled. Yep, Brooks uh, in the middle. Okay, quick, quick, quick. Yep, here we go, here we go. Quick, clean D2, Rook uh, D1. Yep, Arshad's coming. We, we know it, guys, we know it. Arshad's on the way. Knight there. Get out of here. Get out of here. Yep. Want to go rook d1? Oh, that's a trade. That is a trade. Oh, bishop's being attacked. To the center. To the center we go. Rook to the middle. Rook to the middle. Bishop there. Friend a pawn move. More random pawn moves. Okay, we got to come up with some moves. I'm going to put the knight in the middle of the board. Uh, we always stick with the bishop first before the pawn. And remember, we're not taking the knight because we're trying to avoid sort of uh, needlessly giving up bishop for knight. Okay, on there. Technically free pawn for me. I don't mind taking it, bringing the bishop right back. I mean, this bishop's kind of been doing some work. I know it's offside, but it is a free pawn, and we can bring that bishop back to the center. Uh, we can continue our pawn moves, it looks like, which is friendly. Oh, actually, I kind of just trapped the knight. Or he just trapped his knight, maybe. Why take with a piece instead of the pawn? A good rule, I think, in general. Like when you take with a pawn, you're gonna double your pawns. So where possible, you want to try to keep your pawn structure intact. Right? You know, double pawns happen, 
but um, if you can avoid them and you don't need to take them, I would genuinely say we should. Okay, b5, we're going to play reactive, right? We're going to take that. Okay, he didn't take it. We're going to take the free knight now. Bishop attacking the center. Oh, okay. <laughs> Go to uh, another square. I mean, geez. It's in the habit to take with the bishop first. No. Knight, and then bishop, and then pawn. Okay, let's bring the rook somewhere open. Here. Okay, that's a trade. We'll take that. Um, be nice to get those pieces over there. Let's go b4. Another rando pawn on the queen side. And after it gets uh, taken, or if I get to take on c5, probably my plan is going to be as simple as you guys expect. Push my pawn. That is a pass pawn. We're just going to push it. Okay, well, that's capture. And in order to push a pawn, you need to support it from behind, which means I'm probably going to play rook there as my next one. Okay, we go here. And yeah, if I can play b6, b7, I will. I will. See if we can go all the way. That is actually a free pawn. That is actually a free pawn. Okay, you guys know. Not going to think twice here. B6, B7. Push the pawn. Okay, pawn's being attacked. I got to defend it. A bishop move in the center of the board that also defends that pawn. Yes, please. Yes, please. So our pawn all the way on b7. Probably going to be a big reason that we're about to win this game. What's the next step, guys? After you get your pawn all the way here, what what would I generally suggest you do now, do you think? And keep thinking about the past pawn. What's the next step? Okay, we did a good job. We got our pawn down there. So what? How do we proceed? How do we use the fact that we got our past pawn all the way down there? Hit the rook. Yeah, rook a1. I see rook a1, rook c1. Definitely like both of those moves. Getting the rook down there. Queen. Yep. I like the queen activation as well. Also because it's a uh, something that's not participating. Rook a1 to go there. Rook c1 to go there. Or just activating the queen. Also great. Queen b4, queen a5. You guys are all on the right track. You guys are all on the right track. Which one is the most like habits move? Not too sure. Not too sure. Um, I'll try this one because it's offering the trade pieces, but all the moves suggested were, were very, very good. All completely acceptable moves. Hey, he doesn't want to trade. He doesn't want to trade. Hmm. Let's go here. Let's go here. The funny thing about this move is when he takes this, I don't think he sees that that he's attacking my rook. But it still works out. Let's go rook c1. We want to get down there and check. The only reason I don't take this is I don't want to hang that for free. Don't want to hang that for free. So rook c8 is going to be my next plan. Also. I can take that now. Okay, goes bishop there. Got it with my queen. Let's go queen d6. Threatening the rook. Okay. I wonder what he's going to do here. It's very tough. Very tough. Oops. Oops. That's not going to be the move, buddy. That's not going to be the move, buddy.
Okay. 1100. Don't know if we played an 1100 before yet. E5. Let's go knight c6. A6. And we can pre move that recapture. He doesn't take it. Okay. Bring our knight out. About we want to get castled. Um, we also want to strengthen the center with d6. Uh, he picks a good moment though to trade. Ooh. Doesn't take this pawn, instead, he defends his own pawn. Totally understandable. Um, defending a center pawn, I would say, is something to uh, consider here. Um, but I will, I will castle. I think this is what we did last time. We actually did hang this pawn. Um, my opponent went like that. We'll, we'll look to defend. Hey, he did it again. We'll look to defend with the rook. Not capture towards the center. So this is the only exception to capture towards the center. If you've been watching the habits, then um, yeah, that's just something you would know from seeing the many, many episodes we've done. But yes, that is one of the only exceptions to capturing towards the center is this one right here. E takes C6. Every other time, capture towards the center. Okay, trade, of course, we, we want to take. When we get attacked, where do we go? Always here. Always here. Bishop out. H6. And the last time that he brought his bishop here and I played A6, do you remember what he did? He went bishop A4. Right? He kept the pin. And the reason that he took on C6 was I thought it was because he was going to take my pawn. But the initial reaction to this move was bishop back. So I, I was really expecting him to play bishop back here, which would be an extremely strong move. Instead, he plays e5, and I think I get a little bit lucky here. Okay, he takes here. I would take here, but my rook hangs, so I'm going to do this trade first. And, you know, in general, we're trying to avoid double pawns, so I am going to take with the queen. That could have been a lot worse, guys. If he played bishop h4, I might have been screwed here. Like, this move is coming. I can't play queen d6 because it's a 4. It's like, yeah, that move would have really hurt me. Okay, I only have one move here, and it's king h7, so let's go. Annoying position. I actually can't move my bishop out because the, um, the rook is going to be hanging. So I can't move it at all. Can't move it at all. It is pinned. It is pinned. So I'd like to finish my development, but I simply can't do it. I'm trying to figure out how, how to make that happen, and I'm not having an easy time with it. I'm not having an easy time with it. Let's, let's push upon here. I think I'll push this pawn next, or maybe this one. I need some random pawn moves or something. Oh, my goodness. That's a powerful move. Knight e4. We got to move the queen, and where can we move it? Here it gets forked, unfortunately. Um, maybe queen f5. Looks like, you know, at least not getting forked by this knight check. Okay, check. Uh, my king literally has two squares. This is not looking good for us, boys. Not looking good for us. You should be worried. Look at my position here, dude. Look at this guy. He's trying to mate me. He's trying to get me from behind. How am I supposed to deal with this? Okay, I've checkmated in one. Any ideas? How am I supposed to get out of this? How am I supposed to get out of this, boys? So, I mean, if I move my queen somewhere, then queen there is going to be mate. If I play f6, queen there is going to be mate. I cannot move my king. I cannot move my king. Right? So, I have to... 
do something that I really don't want to do. Queen takes f2, queen takes g5, queen takes e4. I think all of those uh, suggestions would be uh, would be technically a way to get out of it. Which one is the best, though, between 1, 2, and 3? Because I don't see other moves. I don't see any other moves. Which one's the best between those? Obviously, we can rule out this, because it only takes a pawn, and it doesn't even remove these knights. Queen takes e4. He's... You know, he, if he checks me, I might get both knights. But if he just takes back, I've only gotten one knight. So technically, queen takes g5 is going to be the best move. So, give it a try. And we are uh, drawing dead. But hey, it's an endgame. Kappa, use the king. It's an end game. Oh, okay. Well, I only have one square. Hey, I was going to go here if you let me. I was going to go there if you let me. I'd, I'd really like to finish my development with this bishop. That's necessary. That's necessary. Then finally I can move this rook. What's he thinking of? What's my my homie from Brazil going to do to me? Have mercy, man. Okay. We got to get developed here. Okay, capture, we always do, right? Always take. Oh, what a tough move. What a tough move. Queen takes pawn. Okay, well, let's take a pawn in the middle with check. Let's take with check. Something, something. What else can we do here? We're, uh, as they say in poker, we are drawing dead. We are drawing dead. Maybe rook e8. Is this the move, guys? Go rook e8 and uh, hope he doesn't take, so I take him. Is that maybe the highest percentage play? Talking about poker. Um, G4, we're out here getting smoke showed. Let's go here. It's our last hope. I think so. Oof. Oof. Let's uh, develop the rooks to the middle. A cunning move, rook e8. Oh, king g1. That's a strong move from Buddy. Buddy from Brazil. That's a powerhouse move. Time for our random pawn moves. Oh, oh, he's, he's really coming at me with this stuff. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I think we're getting uh we're getting dusted here. We're getting dusted here, boys. Free move. Damn. You just got put in the dirt. All right. Well, 
We lost the game where we were ahead, boys. It's on us. 87.6. Look at those habits. It was a good game. He blundered a lot in the beginning. So it was really a game where uh, we just couldn't finish development because, and I'll show you. Okay, so this C3 move's not great. But here, I mean, Bishop H4 is, it's pretty much requisite. Because if I'm not playing G5 there, I am in trouble. There's a pin and E5 is coming. Okay, so E5, big mistake. I get to take here. And here, I should actually take maybe with this pawn. But by taking with the queen, I get a position where I actually can't develop. I'm completely stuck now. Oops. Um, completely stuck. So it goes knight c3, should have gone knight d2. I don't even think I properly understand why. <laughs> uh, d4, I mean, I'm just trying to get some moves going. Knight e4 was very strong. Yeah, and I'm I'm getting obliterated here. Queen h8 is super good. Yeah, and I mean this this is just a uh this is just a beautiful conversion. And I think at the end our buddy forgot about his rook and uh played h6, but of course I had no time left at the end. So we 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 got pretty dusted here, honestly. Uh, it was a pretty close opening. Like I, I think our position was fine. It's more that this if I'm not playing h6, g5, I'm actually in trouble here, I think. Yeah, the queen getting the back rank was brutal. But the thing is, there's not many cases where, you know, you're going to have to take a pawn with a pawn to avoid the queen getting there. Usually taking with the queen on f6, we've been doing that every single game that we've ever played on this account. So, definitely, I think we should keep playing queen takes f6. This is just like a very, very specific case where it happened to not work out. But yeah, like I said, I mean, this was, a, this was a good game and it exposes some of the rare cases where you have to make a decision about, you know, whether pawn or queen is maybe better to take with. But this is where the habits comes in. It's like most of the time and almost all the time we're going to play queen takes pawn. And sometimes it's not going to work. This was a case, queen e8 check, and it did not work. We should have taken with the pawn. But imagine that you took with the pawn every time instead of the queen, you would lose you know, all the other games that we've played in this series so far. So the the trade-off is definitely worth it. Definitely worth it. Let's get another game here. Oh, no. Guys, the, the cartel is actually after me. The Indians are coming in full force. Arshad, he, he, sent, he sent everyone. Every 1,000 in India is logging into chess.com at the moment. This is uh, this is scary stuff. Okay, that's a that's a capture. Whoa! Oh my goodness! Let's we gotta move the knight to the middle of the board. Uh oh. Uh oh. Yeah, we're we're in trouble here. The the Arshad army. not to be messed with. You gotta be careful here, guys. He's going for a think, though. I mean, I'm expecting him to just take my pawn back. In the center and everything. Um, my bishop doesn't have, like, too many good squares to go to, so I'm probably gonna play d6 next to try to get rid of this pawn, and then both my bishops will have places to go. But that's the plan. That is the plan. Man, he's really taking his time here. What's going on? Orshad's probably giving him a talking to. He's he's equipping his his Indian compatriot with some uh, some special armor at the moment. Oh, okay. The knight is being attacked. I'm gonna have to save my knight. I only have one square. 
that looks reasonable. Um, this one, but this one, not that bad. This one, not that bad. Knight back in the middle, knight over there. I would say like of all the squares that we've gone to, knight over here, probably a lot less common than just knight here. Well, oh, 97 definitely blocks development for sure. And I, I think we might, we might learn that the hard way, but um, at the end of the day, let's go D6. At the end of the day, this is a move that I've chosen a lot more often than this move in the series. Um, just controls the, the center and is literally in the center. So definitely something more common, but yes, player. All right, well, fuck it. Set the whole thing up. If it's gonna be like that, it's gonna be like that. All right, this is better. We gotta start. We gotta start all the habits over again. Okay, we're gonna take a free piece. Yep, starting from step one again. Okay, free piece, take that. We'll look to uh, you know, develop our pieces here. Okay, let's uh, block that check. Uh huh. Just gonna begin all over again. We have good development here for sure. Let's pre-move that. So recapture. Yeah, we're gonna get the knights out, bishops, yeah, rooks to the middle. All good stuff here. All good stuff. Okay, knight in the middle of the board. Good, good. It's all shaping up nicely here. Let's get that bishop, you know, controlling the center. So uh, you know, bring some rooks to the middle of the board. Okay. Oh, well, can't complain about this. Can't complain about this. Okay. Uh, the queen is coming out. Uh, well, <laughs> queen h5. Let me tell you, this guy probably thought he was giving me check. Uh-uh, buddy. My king's over here now. You're going to have to bring that lady all the way over here, and it's not happening. It's not happening. I think he's, he's already regretting it. Okay. Bishop getting attacked. Let's just bring it back. Let's just bring it back. Yep, some dynamic play, sure. Definitely, definitely feeling optimistic about my position. Put it that way. I think the best word for my position right now is optimistic. Um, okay, let's, I mean, how are we supposed to complete development? I have to like, Get my king out of the middle, right? This is the this is the answer. Let's let's move my knight and maybe I can run my king, right? To safety. Because there's no way the king can stay in the middle. So it should be your priority apart from you know, completing your development. If your king is ever stuck in the middle, you gotta get it to safety. Now this this, however, is uh, <clears throat> an issue. This is an issue. Okay, so um, being attacked, where do I go? Uh, do I have to just go back? This is uh, ridiculous. This is ridiculous. Knight in the middle. Knight in the middle, and here we are. Take. We're gonna take it back and hopefully mate him on E1. Here it comes, that's a trade. And if only you didn't have another rook, that would be a very good trade. Uh, let's bring the other rook to the middle. We got a great position shaping up here. Yep. Uh, let's move the knight to the middle. 
Of course. Uh huh. Following those habits. Okay. That move hurts. King to the middle. It's an end game. It's an end game. Okay. Active king. We uh we go up the board. We go up the board. Hmm. He has a pass pawn. Well, now I'm able to bring my rook to the middle. This is great. This is great. A nice start for me. Okay. King into the center of the board. We really can't complain about stuff like this. I would say my position is shaping up, as they say. King takes pawn. Now he definitely does not have a pass pawn. Rook in the middle, knight, well, rook controlling the middle, knight directly in the middle. Knight g8. Where is this guy going? Can I get back to a safety now? Can I get back to safety? Ah, he is, uh, he is, he is doing the thing where he is going to check me. Let's, uh, return to safety. Let's return to safety. Yes. And we have, uh, we have accessed the safe square. We have accessed the safe square. We return the knight. And obviously throw in an in-between move, which is check. Guys, it was, I was just going to throw in the check. Obviously, I wasn't going to take his queen here. I have to recapture. It's part of the habits. I was going to recapture. It's his fault he didn't play this. After he does queen there, I was going to recapture the knight. This is part of the habit. I was just throwing a check in the middle. I was just throwing a check in. I wasn't actually going to take the queen. He resigned. It's his fault. So he resigned. I wasn't actually going to take his queen, obviously. Oh, okay. Playing with the black pieces. We're now 100 points higher rated than our opponent. Let's see if it shows. Ooh, you know, we have to take trades, boys. After this, we're going to play d6. We had one game like this before. I don't know if you guys remember it. Um, but we did have a game like this. Where white played bishop c4. And like bishop takes uh, f7. And it worked out for us in the end. So we, we're going to take, take, take. Everybody's taking. Everybody's taking. He goes here and, well, here's the problem. We're going to have to allow uh, double pawns here, it looks like. We don't really want to move our knight again in the opening. Um, but one thing is that the double pawns are the worst. Number one, when you're castled. And number two, when there's queens on the board. So he wants to double the pawns when we're not castled. And when the queens are off the board, it's definitely not as bad. Definitely not as bad. Um, but let's make sure to finish development. We got, you know, rook to the middle. We got bishop coming out to one of those squares. Maybe g4 as well. Yeah, let's bring the rook to the middle. Okay, and the bishop out. And this rook over here. That's the idea. That's what we're planning. Right, and this king has a couple options, right? I would say most normal would be to uh, maybe bring the king that way or bring the king that way. Essentially, my rook wants to be where my king is, and my king needs to uh, pick a side where it's going to be safe. So um, this side actually does look a little bit safer than the other side. So I'll, I'll throw my king back there on b8. So king f8, king g8. The Bring the rook in. Attacking my rook here. He is attacking my rook. Here's the issue. I feel like if I go here, then I'm not going to be able to bring my king in. So I think I'm going to go here and offer a trade with him. 
And if he checks me, then I'll run away to F8, which is where I want to go anyway. Not the best, though. He's definitely uh, been making a comeback in the last couple moves. Yeah, that's strong, so I'm going to hide my king. If we play bishop here, then we lose, uh, then we lose that guy. Uh, okay, let's take. Again, if he takes, well, we can pre-move uh, that. Ah, he goes rook here. Well, remember, guys, after rook takes, we're going to make sure to take trades. We always take trades. Always. Hmm. He goes uh, g3. Well, you're not going to take my bishop. I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back. When is the never miss mate in one rule? When is the that wasn't a mate in one? Lark. Get our king to the middle. Go for trades. Wow. You guys are pretty sure I missed mate in one. But uh, if today has taught you anything, it's that uh, I'm always correct. I'm always correct. There's uh, no chance I miss mate in one. No chance. And I feel pretty confident about myself. Okay, Deep's checking me. Let's go here. Congrats, Tad. Damn, my guy just went G4 and straight up resigned the game. Straight up resigned the game. Ooh, we're playing at 1,200, guys. I think this is the highest rated guy we played for sure. I think it's the highest rated guy we played, no doubt. That is a capture. Of course, we got to get a pawn in the center. We're going to get the knight out. But first, you guys know h3. And look, he does not take. This guy knows what he's doing. This guy knows what he's doing. Getting into the big leagues now. I know, it's a little scary. It's a little scary. Whoa! What's, uh, what's our friend up to here? Whoa, he's playing some quick moves, lads. He is playing some quick moves. Hmm. Uh, we gotta get this bishop developed. Bishop g5, possible. Bishop e3, also probably a good move. He knows the habits, won't play g4. It's possible. That, that could be his rationale. Bishop takes and queen takes. Have I seen a Kari Ken yet in Habits? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. Let's get the queen out. Um, let's get the rook over. Castles. Um, bring the rook over. Choo choo. Let's go. Jacko, thanks for the bits. Daniela as well. Everyone adding on to that hype train. So, my next move, I'm going to get out of uh, this pin. Well, at least I'm going to get my queen out of the pin. Takes, we are definitely going to take with the queen. So, one thing is, if you ever have a choice of, like, take with the pawn and defend your pawn, or take with the queen and lose your pawn, take with the queen. Take with the queen. It is, it is going to be better. It just, it will be. It will be. Okay, queen under attack. Let's move here. It's better to lose a pawn often than to do this. Like it's such a it's such an issue with um with your king side. Okay, let's move the queen again. I, I have had nightmares of this happening. D4. You guys might be wondering, hey, why can't we do this? For me, I am not making these sorts of moves that take advantage of a pin like that. Um, because I think that's a more advanced way to utilize a pin. So I'm going to save those for the next level. Let's get our random pawn moves in. Pinning something is one thing. You know, if there's like a, a queen here and a king here, 
and I go bishop here to pin it, that's a pin. Yeah, it's a tactic. But doing this, it's like I'm putting a piece in a square where seemingly it will be taken for free, you know? So I think that's a little advanced. Where can my nate go? Not here, not here, not here. And between those two squares, I am definitely going to choose b1. Yeah, well, obviously I'm talking about bishop g6, knight takes d5 there, but I'm talking about earlier as well. Earlier in the game, there was a chance for me to play just knight takes d5. In either case, I think the whole thing is a bit more of an advanced tactic, so we'll save that. We'll save that. We're just sticking to very basic tactics for this level. Uh, this knight not in the game, we need to fix that. Whenever you have to move a knight back, you usually want to immediately get it back in the game. You know what I mean? You don't want to leave your pieces undeveloped. So if for some reason you have to go back, that's okay. Just make sure you get it back into the game. Okay, uh, let's, again, back in the game. Knight to f3. Whichever one he wants to take is fine with me. Let's uh, take that. Okay. Um, try to finish our rando pawn moves over here. We're almost done. And then we're going to need to get some pieces in. Maybe doubling the rooks. That's something I've done before. Also... Utilizing the open file. So like probably rook b1 or rook e3 next, if I had to guess. If I had to guess. Um, okay, queen a3. Aggressive move. He's got a super strong pawn structure. You know, everything's solid here. He's threatening two pawns. Yucky. Yucky. Uh, let's, let's defend this one. I don't think I can stop both of them. Let's save one of them. Okay, let's try to get on the open file. That's something. That's something. Back rank hopes. Yeah, it depends. I think he should, you know, sneak in an h6 move at some point, but um, we'll see if he's going to do that. Okay, queen gets attacked. I'm going to go back here. It's, you know, usually my queen wants to stay somewhere in this vicinity if I if I can. Uh, that's a trade, so we will take that. We will take a trade. Um, okay, let's maybe get my knight into the middle of the board. Picking a central square, putting my knight in. I think both uh, moves would have been good. But I uh, can't really move any pawns. Um, yeah, this looks solid. Looks solid enough as a move, knight e5. Do I have any specific threats with that? Not really. Knight there. We're going to take it. That's a trade. And he takes that way, which is very surprising because he's going to give me this pawn. And it's funny, one, a small thing like, hey, capture towards the middle would have saved him completely. F takes g6. It doesn't look like much, but it's actually a terrible, just atrocious move. And it might cost him this game. Just the move F takes g6. So a simple rule of capturing towards the middle it might not seem like much, but um, it really would have saved him here. Really would have saved him here. So I'm just moving in the center, trying to attack his pawns, right? That's uh, sort of what we want to do here. Um, centralize the queen. If I was black, I mean, I would almost just be putting, putting the guys behind the pawn and, and trying to punch that home. Trying to punch that home. Let's play c4. Pawn move. Oh, man. Talking about punching at home. He's really punching at home. Pawn a3. Damn. Didn't pay any attention to my move c4. I think he's going to regret that. I'm going to use my rook. Take a pawn in the center. Oopsies. Oopsies. Ah, A2. Well, I can't say no to a uh, free queen. Oh, I can't say no to a free rook. <laughs> what? <laughs> All of a sudden he has a queen again? <laughs> Wait a minute, where'd that come from? <laughs> that wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> Wait a minute, didn't I just win his queen and then win his rook? And All of a sudden it's like equal again? Huh? Okay. 
Check. Check. In the center. We got a pass pawn. I'm going to try to escort the pass pawn home. That's the idea. Escort. Escort. Oh, check. Oh, check. Ah, he wants to draw me. He wants to check me forever. Oh, it's tragic. It's tragic. Uh, oh, is he offering a draw? No. Someone else is offering for me to be friends. Let's just go ahead and decline that. Remember, guys, when you're on the grind, you don't have time for friends. We will block the check. Block the check. Need to uh, push my pawn, but he's actually he's he's covering it. So let's let's escort escort. It's all about the escort. Oh, okay. He's checking me around, but he is. Uh, He's very persistent with his checks. <laughs> hey, that's not my problem, dude. <laughs> that's not my problem. That is a free piece. So we can get to 1100 with one game. Depends on the rating of my opponent. Let's find out. Could be this game right here, 1100. Get back to the habits. Wow, we have the exact same rating, and it's plus eight. So it's going to be me or this guy. Guys, we're throwing down in the arena right now. It's me or this guy. One of us is getting to 1,100 right now. Who's it going to be? Stay tuned to find out. D5, reactive, always taking. Boom, always taking. Now, this is actually the same... Scotch gambit, but it's from Black's perspective. If I can't get my bishop out to any of those squares, I have to go here. Right? And get castle. Imagine if a draw. I mean, it could be a draw. I haven't had too many draws uh, in my run overall, but you're you're definitely right. It could be. Yeah, I mean, I got all my pieces developed here. Uh, oh, that's a trade. I have to take that. My queen is being hit. My queen is being hit. I gotta move the lady. Move the lady. Okay, so. Where's a good square? Well, I can go here. I don't know if it's a good move, but um, there's no way he can take it. So bishop here seems reasonable, but you know at the same time, these pieces have already moved and the queen's being attacked. Not really sure, but uh, I think I think this move is uh, is pretty normal. I actually don't think it's necessarily a, a tough move to spot because bishop does not usually go here. My bishop usually goes to one of those two squares. Um, and mm, something to consider. Something to consider. Queen here is saying, look, my bishop is pinned to my queen. So if I move my bishop, I lose my queen. But there's an element which my opponent forgot. Bishop f5, he doesn't have time to take my queen. And why is that? Because he's in check. That's the power of check. You keep the tempo, keep the initiative. Bishop takes f5 is a free piece, and it's with check. Check. And now our queen is attacked, and we are just going to save our queen. Okay. Um, let's bring the rook to the middle. It's taking my pawn. We're going to bring the rooks, and then we're going to get uh, an h3 move in, right? Don't forget h3. Don't forget about h3. Even if you win a piece, you know, you're caught up in that moment. Don't forget about h3. 
Did you check out the uh, Instagram story uh, left for chess? It's beautiful, eh? I mean, it was so tasty. I can't even can't even uh, describe. Let's uh, take that and let's offer another trade. And don't worry, we're gonna get H three in next. Yeah, the meal was very good. Big shout out to Dylan, guys. Keeping uh, keeping the show going. H three. Don't forget about that move. Is Dylan a chef? Dylan's like everything, man. Dylan's a chef. He's a bartender. He's, he's a barber. He's everything. Uh, uh, okay. Let's uh, queen in the middle. Attack a piece. Attack a piece. Let's uh, push, push my pawns over here. Let's... Uh, Keep pushing my pawns. Hmm. Queen has to move. Let's pick a central square. Bishop e4. Yep, would be would be a decent move. I'd, I'm sort of trying to like get down here and give him a check. Also keeping my queen in the center of the board. Hmm. Bishop is being attacked. Bishop is being attacked. So when the bishop is attacked, we're going to have to move the bishop. I actually only have one square. I'm going to have to go here. It is the only square because if I go back here, he can go um, f5. Knight to c2. And uh, knight c2, don't mind if I do. Check. Check and check. A beautiful 1100 on the dot. Now, what should my opponent have done? My opponent should have checked me. Did you guys notice? This bishop was covering my escape square. Now, it won't be mate, but it would have been very good, right? Luckily for me, I can save myself, but in our habits so far, we've never actually had a position where our opponent is covering our escape square, and then they can also check us on the back rank. It's never happened so far, but it is something to be careful of. Something to be careful of. Something, you know, level three. But level two, level one, we've never seen that, actually. It's just never happened. I don't know if it's luck. But the bishop's covering our escape square, so that would be checkmate if I couldn't block with my queen. But I would at least lose a piece here, which is quite bad. A lot of people were saying, why not take on h7? I mean, quite simply, I have never in this series gotten greedy for pawns. It's like, basically, the further away the pawn from the center, the less likely I am to take it. The less likely. So if it's a central pawn, as soon as I'm castled, I'll take it if it's free. You know, if it's one of these pawns, I might leave it hanging for a few moves. I won't, you know, I won't be in a rush to take it. But if they leave it hanging for a while, I'll grab it. Same with these pawns. And then the pawns on the side, I almost never take. You know, unless it's an end game or something. You just won't see me play a move like bishop h7 in this position. So that's why I didn't take it. Remember, the rule is to take free pieces. Pawns are not pieces. Okay, so taking this pawn or not taking this pawn has nothing to do with whether it's safe or not. It's that, generally speaking, I won't take it. Why? A lot of the times when you take pawns like this, you end up getting trapped. So as a rule, I'm going to say, hey, just don't take it. I mean, just leave it. If it's an end game, sure, you can go grab it. But there's, you know, I've gotten to 1100 without ever taking an H or uh, an A pawn, you know, that wasn't part of an attack, let's say. It's just better to stay away from it. You're going to get your piece trapped, something stuck behind enemy lines. It's not worth it. So that's what I've been doing. I've just been not taking in general. And anyways, we got a nice uh, checkmate in here. Although when he played g6 and I brought my bishop there, you know, what I should have done here is there's no way I should move my bishop because my opponent can do this. We just talked about it. He can basically almost mate me. So what I should have done is I should have checked if I was playing the absolute best move. And after king here, I have two options. Number one and number two. So bishop c8 is a nice move because it leads to checkmate. But queen c8 is also a nice move. 
hint, and it leads to checkmate again. Quite cute. But anyways, it looked like uh, there was going to be a mate there. However, queen e8 is a force checkmate. That's what I should have done. But we play reactive in habits. And of course, after g6, my bishop's attacked. I got to move it somewhere safe. And d7 was the only safe square. So my opponent did have one move after bishop d7 to check me. And that would have been very tough. That would have been very tough. Hey guys, just a reminder that building habits is going to be a regular series on our YouTube channel. So make sure to get subscribed if you are not already. Drop a comment down below for the algorithm and let me know what you thought about the video. See you next time.